Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you my ultimate cybersecurity lab project that I've been working on. This is a really good opportunity to get hands on and build a number of different tools that I've wanted to play with for a little while. So the lab looks like this. I'm going to have a PFSense firewall. Behind that PFSense firewall, I'm going to have a number of different environments. This environment at the top is where all my security tools will live. So I will have Kali, which will be our attack tool. We'll do everything from this machine. Caldera, which is an adversary emulation tool. We're going to have Wazoo, which is the same XDR tool. Nessus for vulnerability scanning. We'll use Security Onion for threat hunting, networking and monitoring. The Hive will be used for security incident response and Cortex will be used as an analysis tool. So that integrates with the Hive. Down here in the bottom, we have our environment for vulnerable machines. In this environment, we'll have Metasploitable 2, we'll have Buggy Web App and we will have Down Vulnerable Web App. We will also leave space in this network for images that we will download from VomHub. In the middle here, we will have an Active Directory Lab. So we will have a Windows Server 2022, one in the ADE and Group Policy and DHCP and DNS. And we will also create these two instances. That's a Windows 10 and a Windows 11 machine. And we will connect them to that domain. Over here, we will have Ubuntu. We'll have Docker on that. And they will also use Portainer for deploying all our Docker containers. All in all, I think it's a really exciting lab. There's loads of tech across this lab. So if you're in cybersecurity and you want to get hands on and learn some new technology, then this is going to be a brilliant lab. If you want to follow along and build this lab as well, everything I build in this environment is going to be hosted on Proxmox. I made a video a few weeks ago on the Proxmox server that I built. I will link it here. So if you want to go back, if you have a server and you want to put Proxmox on it, by all means do that. That video will show you the step-by-step -step guide to do that. And then come back here and then you can continue on on the lab build. So this video will be part one of this series. And in this video, we're gonna look at the, the firewall setup. We're also gonna build Kali Linux. We're gonna build Ubuntu. We're gonna add Docker and Pertainer. Before we get ahead of ourselves and dive straight into deploying things, then I think we need to take a minute to look at the network design and how we're gonna segment all of this environment out. So as I said, this will all exist behind a PFSense firewall. I have a number of different VLANs that I'm gonna use for different things. VLAN one in the corner here is where all our security tools are gonna to live. We're gonna have VLAN 10 down here where all our vulnerable machines. VLAN 20 will be used for our Windows environment and VLAN 30 will be used for Docker and all our containers. And at some point during the lab build, we will extend our environment out to one of these cloud providers or maybe even to all three if we can. So I've logged into Proxmox and there's a few things that I want to show you before we start. First of all, I've already downloaded the images that I need to build the different machines. So I've downloaded the Kali Linux ISO. I've also downloaded the PFSense firewall image. I've went and downloaded the Ubuntu desktop ISO and also the Ubuntu live server. If you want to follow along, I will leave the instructions or leave the links to those different locations in the description below. So before we create the firewall image, I want to add an additional Linux bridge. So this will be the local LAN environment. So all of these links here to these different networks, that is the network adapter that will do all of those. So I'm just gonna do that, click create Linux bridge. I'm gonna leave this as vmbr2 is fine. Address here is 10.10.1.0/24. I'm gonna click on this VLAN aware and I'm also gonna put in a comment here send lab lan. I'm going to create that. And I'm also going to click on apply config. Yes. Okay, done. So you can see now that it's active. Now that, that is done, let's click on create VM. I'm going to change the ID and I'm going to call this 201. And I'm going to say prod firewall. Click next. I'm going to choose the PFSense image that I uploaded. Click next. Next again. I'm gonna change the storage location to ZFS, that's fine. I'm gonna change this to, actually I'll just leave this as 32 gig, that's fine. Go next and next again, and we'll just leave it the way it is, go next. Then we're gonna leave this, leave this as VMBR0. So this is the one interface. We'll come back in after and add the additional network. Click next and then finish. Once that's done, just click on the firewall on the left hand side, go into hardware, and I'm just gonna add an additional network device. I'm gonna click on add and then select VMBR2, so the lab LAN network that we just created previously. 
click on add, then just click on start. And then we'll go into console and we will run through the firewall build. So we'll just let this boot up and then we'll run through the config. Okay, we accept. Install PF sense. Okay. I'm just going to click OK for most of these. That's fine. I'm going to hit space bar there. Click OK. Let's try. Yes. That's fine. Then let's reboot. So at this point, you will have to run through the actual firewall config settings. Should VLANs be set up now? I'm going to click on no. I'll do that a bit after. So I need to enter the WAN network adapter. So that's VNet 0. And then the LAN is VTNet 1. So yes, I'm fine with that. Okay, so that's been completed. While we're here, we need to set the interface IP address. So go to option 2. And I want to change the LAN. Do I want to configure IPv4 address via DHCP? No, I need to set it up manually. I'm going to put in the new address for this is going to be VLAN 1 in our diagram. So if you go back here, you will see that this is VLAN 1. So that's going to be 10.10.1.0. So this one is going to be 10.10.1.254. Go back here and put this in. Hit enter. It's going to be a slash 24. Let me just press enter. No, we don't care about IPv6 for now. Yes, we want to enable DHCP on that network. So click on yes the start address so I think I had set that as DHCP was going to be from 10 10 150 so if we go here 10.10.1.50 and in the end 10 10 1.100 except no here okay and then it's hit enter to continue so that's the base image of the firewall created so we'll build the Kali Linux instance next and then we'll connect to the firewall to configure the rest of the firewall rules So let's click on create VM to build the Kali Linux instance. Create VM, I'm going to change the ID to 202. This is going to be called prod Kali. Click on next. Select the ISO image of the Kali Linux ISO that I uploaded. Next. Next again. I'm going to change the storage to ZFS. I'm going to give this 120 gig of storage. Next. I will core to that. Next again. So 192. I'll give this 8 gig of RAM. And then we we'll go next again and then we want to put this into vmbr2 so the network switch that we created so that will be connected through this link here to our firewall and click on next and then finish so let's hit on start and boot this up and we will run to the build click on continue and i'm gonna go british english is fine so let's choose a host name i'm just gonna keep that as cali i have no domain name click continue Jared is my name, then the username is going to be Jared. I'm going to choose a password, which is not password123. So we're going to use the entire disk. Click continue, continue again, finish petition and write change to disk, continue. Write changes, yes. Grub install. So install Grub root driver, click on yes and continue. I'm just going to select this disk and then click the continue again. So the installation has completed, so let's click on continue. Should reboot now. We need to go into hardware and then just remove the ISO. Uh, do not use any media, okay. Okay, so let's just log in. First of all, let's check the network we are on so we are 10 10 150 which is exactly what we wanted so we can ping the firewall happy days so let's go to the firewall 10.10.1.254 admin and pf sense oh that didn't work admin PF sense. 
So now we've logged into the firewall, let's run through the different settings that we need. So we need to create the additional networks in VLANs, add the firewall rules for those VLANs so they can get out to the internet and talk to each other. We also have to configure DHCP for the different networks. So let's first of all do the networks. So go to interfaces and assignments and then just click on VLANs. So if you look here, we have to add VLAN 10, VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. So let's go back. We'll click on add these are going to be off the lan interface so this is vlan 10 i'm going to click on save i'm going to click add i'm going to add lan i'm going to choose vlan 20 save add and do vlan 30 click on save so let's go into interface assignments next. We need to assign these VLANs to the LAN interface. Very simple, just click on add and add again and add again. And you can see these networks have been named as opt1, opt2 and opt3. We will change the names when we are adding the IP addresses to those interfaces. So let's go to interfaces and then go to opt1. I'm going to enable the interface. I'm going to change the name. This is going to be VLAN 10. IPv4 is going to be static IPv4. The address is going to be 10.10.10.254. And this is also a slash 24 network. And we're going to go to the very bottom and click on save. And apply. So let me do that for the other two. Enable. This is going to be VLAN 20, static IPv4, 10.10.20.254. And that's going to be slash 24. Now apply and then let's do the next one. So it's VLAN 30. 10.10.30.254. And again, this one is also a slash 24. Let's click on save and apply. Okay, so that is the VLANs configured. We renamed them and we've also configured the IP addresses for those networks. Next thing we'll do is configure the firewall rules for those networks. So click on firewall, click on rules. If you click into LAN, you will see the existing firewall rules that, we, that come whenever you build the firewall initially. Then you have VLAN 10, 20 and 30. You'll see there's no rules for these VLANs. So let's create them. So if you go back to LAN, I'm going to tick this rule here that has the source LAN subnets, destination, anything on any port. So it's a very open rule, but it's going to be okay for this, this lab environment. So I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to choose VLAN 10, I'm going to click on paste. You can see that's been completed, so let's go back to LAN. I'm going to do the same, so I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to do this for VLAN 20, paste. And then go back again, copy. And this is going to be for VLAN 30. Now there is one other change we need to make to each of these rules. So if you go to VLAN 10, you will see here the source is LAN subnet, so we need to change that to VLAN 10 subnets. So I just edit the rule. If you go down to the actual source itself, you'll see where it says LAN subnets, just change that to VLAN 10 subnets. And then just save that. So go to VLAN 20 and do the same. And then VLAN 30 is the last one. Save and then I hit apply. So that will apply all the network changes that we've just made. The final thing that we need to do to complete the firewall setup is just to make sure DHCP is set up for those different networks. So under services, you'll see DHCP server. So we'll see this is what we set up previously. So 10, 10, 150, 100. Now, one thing we didn't do as part of that is add any DNS. So I'm going to add that now. I'm just going to add 10.10.1.254 and 8.8.8.8. So I'll add that to each of the different networks. And just click on save and apply. So let's do the same for VLAN 10. I'm going to enable DHCP on this interface. So it's going to be 10.10.10.50. Let's just double check. And it's going to end at 10.10.50.100. Let's not forget DNS. 10.254. And save that. So I made a mistake. This should be 10.10.10.100. 10 10 and let's just save that. 
being on 20, I want to enable that. 10.10.20.50 to 10.10.20.100. Then DNS. And then save. And 30. 10.10.30.50 to 10.10.30.100. And 10.30.254. And we're going to use 8.30.38 for DNS. Then we'll click apply changes that will apply all of those network configs to those VLANs. So what we've done so far is we've built this firewall. We have created all of the different networks and VLANs. We have also created the firewall rules and we've enabled DHCP. So for part one for this video, this is what we wanted to build. You wanted to build all of this network, so you wanted to build Kali Linux, which you've done. The final bit was to build Ubuntu server, then we'll add Docker and we'll also add Portainer on there. So let's get started with the Ubuntu server. Click on create VM. This one is going to be given ID 203. I'm going to call it prod docker. Click next. We're going to choose the Ubuntu server live image. Click next. Next again. Storage wise, I'm going to give this thing a ton of different storage. I'm going to choose ZFS. That's where I want to store it. I'm going to up this the socket on core. Click next again. For RAM, I'm going to give this 16 gig of RAM. So 16, 3, 8, 4. Click next. For the network, we are going to click on the lab LAN. Also here for VLAN tag. Remember, this will exist inside VLAN 30. So in here, let's just do 30. And then we click on next again. And then we click on finish. Let's go to console and start this thing up. So we're going to do the install. So we're going to choose English. We're going to go done. Then we want the Ubuntu server. Click done again. So you will notice here that we've got the IP address of 10.10.30.50. So it's exactly what we wanted. And um, this also proves that DHCP on the network is actually working as well, which is really good. So click on done. Keep going, done again. I am just click done. I'm going to go down again to done. And again, I'm just going to run through all the way through the setup. So Jared, I'm going to call it Ubuntu for now. Pick a username. Jared. Upgrade the Ubuntu Pro, skip for now. I'm going to hit that because I want to install OpenSSH because I want to SSH to this server from my Kali Linux machine. Now, at this stage, you can install other things. You can see Docker is in here already, but I'm actually going to do it manually so then I can show you guys where to go to get the documentation and, and just what bits you need. So let that run through the install. That should take a few minutes. Then we can do Docker and then we'll get Portainer installed. Okay, so the install is complete. Let's go down to reboot now. While that is doing that, let's go back to our Kali Linux machine because I want to search online to get the commands that we need to install Docker on Portainer. So I'm just going to go to Google. So in here, I'm just going to type in Docker install Ubuntu and I'm going to choose any of these. So this is the install commands that we need for Docker. Let's just go back to the Docker server and check what's going on okay so so that server's built i can now log into that server let's go back to cali and let's see if we can ping that server and if those firewall rules have worked so 10.30.50 okay perfect that has worked so if i go to ssh jared at 10.10.30.50 yes the password okay so i'm connected to that server let's first of all let's do the docker install so run the following command to uninstall any conflicting packages okay so let's grab the next commands to set up the docker apt repository so paste that in and then let's go to the next set of commands so install docker install the latest version let's copy that and paste that in. So Y for yes. So no services need to be restarted. Okay, so that looks good. So verify Docker engine installation. Okay, let's copy this and go back here and this clipboard. And as you can see, hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. So that means Docker is installed. If you do sudo Docker, PS, that should check and see. So there's no containers there. It actually builds that hello world container and then just destroys it again. Ubuntu's installed, we've installed Docker. 
the last thing we have to do is install Protainer. Let's go back here to Google. I'm gonna get the commands we need to install Protainer. So install Protainer on Community Edition with Docker. Perfect, we'll take that one. Okay, so let's go down to deployment. We have to create a volume first of all, and then we will download and install the Protainer server container. Okay, let's copy this and we'll go back to the command prompt. I'm going to paste this in. We need to add sudo before we run those commands. So go back, put sudo in, and then run that command again. Okay, so that's created the Protainer data volume. Then the next one here, we'll copy that, go back here, and then we'll paste it. So again, we need to go out to the very start and add sudo. Sudo docker ps. Okay, so you can see this container is there. It is running on port 9443. So if we go up here and we type in the address of our Docker server, so 30.50.9443. Okay, so let's create a password and untick this. And let's create user. So when you get to this, page you will see where it says here environment is non-selected if you just click on add environments and then you will see it should be an environment is local here it is here click on live connect and that will bring you to your local environment which is here so we can see because there's two containers so we have the portainer container that we had that is actually this and then you have the previous container that we ran as part of the install and that was the hello world we can actually just like that and click on remove. Let's review what we've done. So if we go back to the design again, we can see we have built this PFSense firewall. We have created all of the various different networks that we need. We've built this Kali Linux machine. So that's gonna be our attack machine and our management machine, which we'll do everything from. We've also created the different VLANs. Over in VLAN 30 here, we've added the Ubuntu server, we've installed Docker, and we've also added Portainer on there. So that's what we will use to deploy all our containers. And that's it so far. That was what we're gonna do in part one. So if you followed along, I hope yours is working and it's the same state as mine. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll try and go through and answer them. If you look at the high level design, there's a lot of different tools that we need to install. And if you're new to cybersecurity or you're just trying to get your hands on some new cool technology in cybersecurity, then this is a really good project that will help you. So thank you so much for watching and that's pretty much it for today. So I'll see you next week.